Hi and happy Christmas everybody. Joe here at Woolly Cottage. I hope you've all woke up to a nice cozy house today. Um, this is my last of my Vlogmas. I hope you've enjoyed them. It's been a lot of work, um, a lot of trying to find time in between, um, doing bits and pieces for these videos and trying to find different topics and stories and things like that. So I really appreciate the support that you've given me by giving me thumbs up and leaving comments in the descriptions below. It's really, really appreciated. Thank you very much. So in today's advent, and do you know what? I've just thought I've left it upstairs, but I should be able to remember the ingredients. So in Christmas Day Advent, you got 100 gram. I'm sure I called it Harvest Gold. 100 gram bat. In this, I have got um, some brown, I think it's Shetland Moor, and I think there might even be some Manx Lohan in there. I will put the description of what was entailed in it when I post on Saturday. I'm saying on Saturday. It's currently Thursday and I'm doing this video now so I can have it out of the way and I can have Christmas Eve to myself and film it in advance. So yeah, so you may, at the end of this I might be wearing something else, but don't be surprised. Um, so yeah, so that is Christmas Day back. So there's um, merino with a gorgeous, um, a lovely yellow merino in there with a gorgeous yellow Stellina put through it. There's chocolate, um, chocolate cake, Sari silk and there is merino with flax and silk in there. Um, what else is in there? There's a Shetland with a Tussa silk blend in it as well. There's a bit of everything and there's hand dyed um, Shetland in it as well. And it's absolutely gorgeous. It really, really is nice. And with it being a hundred gram bat, there are quite a few colours within the, the actual Christmas advent that it will go with really lovely. So that came in your Christmas Day parcel, wrapped in gold, and one of my handmade bags. Now, I've only just started listing these on the website. So they're a pop-up bag. So it, your bat come with that. I can't remember if I put anything else in it, but I think it was just the bat in the bag. Okay, and it's actually a pop-up bag. This one's not quite finished yet because you've all got them as usual as it says for anything else. So you literally grab the sides with these little tabs and you can push it all the way down, which ends up being a half sized bag. So you can get into your project, have a ruler around inside it properly. So that reduces the size of it. And then when you're finished and you've got a little metal um, magnet stopper in the top of where it pops together. So when you finish with it, it pops out. So there's different designs. I've just made the a mass batch up and then just put them in for your Christmas day adverts. So I hope you find that useful. Um, it's always handy, especially even when you felt as you, you don't realize how much wool you end up having stashed around or you lose the current project that you're working on and you can't remember what you've done with it. But it's, this is great for putting your, your needles in your stab it bag or your phone with your needles in. Um, and your bits and pieces and your extra your extra bits that you like to use for certain projects or as I say for knitting with and you've got your current project in there and on the go and there is like a square bottom on the base of that there we go pop that out and you've got a proper square bottom on there so that's it so today wet felt in wet felt in again now don't laugh at these when I put them on this morning, I went, oh, it looks like I've got man's hairy hands. But I'm wet felting some mittens. See, I put dark grey Wesley Dale curls on and they look like a man's hairy hand. But it don't matter. I was just messing around the other day there and just trying to work out some cutouts to be able to do. So you want to go and get yourself some foam now. So you want your towel, your bubble wrap, you want some foam to cut around. Now, I have that, can you just see that there? Hold on a sec, there we go. Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna put your hand on your plastic or your foam that you're going to use, okay, and draw around your actual hand. And then from your hand, which I've got fills here, all the way around, you wanna put roughly 10% extra on the outside of that, and that's the line you're gonna cut, and that's the line that you're gonna use for your, um, what's the word, for your, your inlay, for what you're gonna work around for making your mitten. And you only need the one, you don't need two. I did cut myself out two and I went, 
why don't I just flip it or when I put the pattern on the side make sure that I've got one thumb facing in the other thumb facing in so there we go so yeah go off get that done and um, cut that out I'm just going to go and pop onto my Instagram live chat I've got my soapy water sat there what um, soaking away I found my mesh material the other day so you need something to cut around to put your hand on you need your mesh you need your soapy water or if you're lucky you've got one of those spray things you want your bubble wrap and you want your bamboo or roller or there was something else the other day that I thought about that you could use you know the um, foam tubing that you can get for keeping your pipes um, warmer when to stop them from freezing through something like that if you've got any pieces lying around use one of those um, or even a rolling pin and that's generally all you need and you will okay so i'll catch you back in a bit and we'll get on with what will potentially be my second mitten because i'm going to go and pop over instagram now i have a quick of a bit of a live chat um and do one of my mittens on there as well so if you want to catch that it'll be on my instagram so see you in a bit right so it's the exact same principle as we did on the wet felted vessels okay so what i've done is i've got some foam and i've cut out a imprint as i said at the beginning this one's far too big for me this is phil's hand print right but this just gives you an idea and then i've drawn around the mold up to my wrist of my hand and then from that point i've then gone back over it and i have just trace the outline of my hand so I get a 10% extra volume because you're going to lose between 10 to 15% depending on how long you felt the item for. So this is just my take on doing wet felting. Other people do it slightly different. There's one of them done. So I've just been over onto my Instagram live chat and done this. And had a quick catch up in a natter with a few. So. I'm starting off with a base on this of a natural grey merino not for any specific reason just because I had it for when I was doing these gloves yesterday so you want to really fine like that just grip see how you can still see my hand through it that's as fine as you want the layers and then start layering horizontally Make sure you've got fibres hanging over the edge because you need them to help create a seal on the other side when you fold it over in a minute. And you don't want to place too thick a wedge, you don't want the layer to be too thick because you want it to have, you want the fibres to be nice and thin and flat mainly because it just stops the, wool from, the actual wearable item from being too big and bulky. And that's it really and I'm going with three layers of fibers on these so there's actually not a lot there so I'm just going to spray splay that piece out across there and just grab some more of this other section that I've just split from it and just keep layering till I get to the top and one more on that piece there now I'm going to use my bat this is my Christmas bat okay so I'm just going to pull a strip off there for myself and I'm going to lie it on its side because I want all these colours that are in there so there's bits of greens, there's deep maroon in there, there's these lovely golds with hints of sparkle in them and then you've got the silks in there as well and there's even flax. Now flax or linen I wouldn't use on its own but because it's in with all these fibres just like bamboo it will just join in with everybody else it's been captured by their fibers anyway the ruggedness of the wool so just start building up your layer going in a vertical direction and just make sure that you do remember to just layer over ever so slightly over the side of the resist see joe remembered the word i only just remembered that when i was doing my live chat a minute ago i couldn't for the love of money remember what that word was so i'm just gonna ever so gently build up my layer all the way up to the top so it slightly sits over the layer beforehand and has about just over half layering on the top and then I'm going to do that again coming back so 
so a little bit there over that side and just keep going all the way down okay nearly at the bottom there we go and then just another little bit over the top of where my thumb potentially is there crisscross that over and then just move my wallet the way so it doesn't get wet put my voile mesh over the top make sure mine isn't very wide you might have um, wider ones yourself um, that's what I've got at the moment so I don't like to over soak my items as I've mentioned before I like I like to make sure that it's the soap that's doing the work and not the water that's doing the work if you get my drift then I mean to the end of the day there's plenty of water in these suds anyway but I don't drench it some people like to drench it like a lake I'm not overly keen on that I think it's just a waste of water and it just creates such a mess afterwards so I'm just wanting to get all these fibers so I'm gonna start rubbing up and down so all this moisture and soap so it starts moving around the wool before I flip it over on my hand here just for this section over here and all this process is doing is making sure that all the liquids get moved around and you're actually wetting the wool so I'm gonna peel this off now make sure it's all wet underneath voila plant that to one side lift up and flip it over now this is a section that you've got to worry about okay um, I'm just gonna take off a little bit of wool and I'm gonna just quickly put it inside there and flip it over the other side I'm just wanting to reinforce this area that's going to be moving quite a lot now in hindsight I could have cut a, a circuit um, more of a, an arc in that section there but I haven't so I will that's an that's a, a nil point from me. Um, I'm just going to cut down here a little bit just so I can fold my fiber over. Okay, so I'm going to start folding it over now over the edge of the resist and start building out my layers. There we go. A bit more just gently pull your wool in start softening it I'm just gonna add a bit more suds to that just to help me soften and flatten out the fibers coming over the edge all the way across there I'm going to get another piece of this fibre again and do the exact same thing with the reinforcement in this thumb area. There we go, that one. I'm quite happy with that. Now, dry my hands off because it's not worse than trying to deal with wool when your hands are drenched. Okay, so we're going to do the exact same thing again. Build up with the grey on the first layer. So we're going to go cross over like so over the thumb region get myself a bit more off just keep layering until you get to the top making sure that you have still got some overlay for folding over on the other side 
So I'm just going to put a little bit more on my thumb section. Now don't worry if you end up, when you've pulled it and you end up with a clumpy section, just fan it out. Right, next, up and down. So start from the base. All the way up there. Silk's really good to um, do wet felting with. That's why I didn't mind doing the silks in this one because um, I knew that they'll f they will felt together. But you do need to make sure you've got some sort of woolly fibre or something with a coarser texture to that. Right, one more layer on this. So back down to the bottom again. say so because you're doing the, the the layers not so thickly you can actually get away with three layers on this and it gives you more to play with I don't know, I think just a tiny little tiny bit extra across here there we go so again get your mesh Place it over your wool and your resist. Okay. Just tuck your fibers in there a little bit if it seems to be sticking out. Right. And then just gently rub out all the moisture to all the areas that you've just put down. Up and down, start help building this process up of felting. At the same time, you're actually soaking the wool. So I'm just gonna go round and round and round in circles. rub down the side of the resist where the shape is on the um, the mitten and on this side again okay peel that off oh shouldn't need that again flip over your mitten okay and fold it over You shouldn't really get creases. I'm just going to have to cut through this section here just a little bit. And I'm going to reinforce this bit again with some wool in this area here just to make sure that that join isn't going to be lost. At the end of the day, that's the area that you work the most when you're wearing a pair of mittens. And then just keep tucking that over like that so a bit more soapiness and I'm just gonna actually I'm, I am going to get my mesh again because I just want to make sure that I can get these creases out before I start working it properly now this is the time this is the point like we did on the other day last week on the um, wet felting vessel this is the point that you want to add any locks to it or any embellishments that you can't do when it's dry, such as adding locks to it, swirls on it, uh, little neps or whatever you want to put on there, or even some extra silk satin, like sari silk or something like that. If you want to add anything like that to it, now's the time to do that before you start this next process. So I'm just trying to shape this thumb section again. Right. Oh, now to start rolling. So you want to 
when you're rolling, you want to roll it like this 30 times. Then once you've done your 30, I always go in an anti-clockwise direction and then I'm going to roll that up 30 times, twist it around 30 times, turn it around 30 times and then I'm back to the beginning. Then I flip it over and I do the exact same thing again. So it's 30 times, oh a minute, 30 times, 30 times, roll it, roll it, roll it 30 times and then back to there roll it 30 times okay so I always start with the end at the facing me at the bottom so I know exactly where it was I started and where I'm gonna end once I got to that point and then you want to make sure that the fibers are all sticking and not coming apart and you also want to make sure that you can actually get into your mold your resist on the inside at the moment you can't because can you see yeah, you can actually see those grey fibres there and they're not sticking to each other because it's not felted yet. So that's the process we're at now. And I did think, if you don't have anything like rolling pins at home or anything like that, or the tubes, you can actually just use a towel and roll it up in that all the way up. Just exactly the same method as what I'm doing with this bamboo sheet. Get yourself a hand towel, right? The bathroom, an old one will do because you're still going to... When you're dealing with hand dyed fibres and sometimes even fibres that have been dyed in the mills, you're still going to get, with certain dyes, um, a runoff of residue dye pigment coming out. I've got a little bit here on mine, there's sort of like a sandy colour that's coming out on this wool. So, you can, technically, just roll up your bamboo in a towel and do the exact same process as what I'm doing now. I'm just going to take my ring off because it's drenched wet through. Right, so roll it up and you want to roll it 30 times, okay? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 17, 18, 19, 20, I've just counted 40. Oh. Right. Okay, so now I'm going to twist my arm around. Right, as you're doing this process, you may see that it starts to curl up in places. Don't worry about it. It's fine. It's supposed to do that. Okay, so I'm going to stop this bit and fast forward the next section. Okay, so I've done my 13 30 on both sides. Let me see if I can get in to my actual center section. There we go, just tease that open ever so slightly. And this is why I say to you, get yourself something that you can bend and crimple underneath because you need to be able to take out that section so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to fold that edging over and I'm going to have a mess around with my with my wool and my soap and I'm going to just felt this and manipulate it into place just to make sure these edges are bound off. Alternatively, you can sew your edges into place if it doesn't want to felt in. And I'm going to work my edges.
make sure that they're all sealed. And just start manipulating the fibres. Be a bit rough with them. You just want them to start actually felting and shrinking now. This is the fulling process, so you just want to do that. Roll them up a little bit in your hand. Give it a bit of a squeeze. Roll it about. And this will help shrink it. And then the next bit, once you've done that a fair few times, because I've got one already, I know that I need them to be comparison about the same size, which they're not too bad. I've still got to do the thwacking bit, which is the most enjoyable piece. So next, I literally, oh, just move that light out of the way. Whack it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right, let's tuck that over again. That's looking a bit messy, but I think I will probably trim that anyway. So there we go. And you can do that another 10, 20 times doing that thwacking process. Soap it up until you get a bit more reducement. And where's this? There is. Yeah, I could probably do is shaping that a little bit up the top so it becomes a bit more rounder. So I'm just going to put my hand in this. Yeah. Definitely need to trim this up a little bit at the bottom and just round it off. Because when you're doing this with your rubbing, like you saw me doing with the wet felted vessel the other day, all you're doing is shaping it so I just want to stop that from being such a harsh point at the top there we go definitely need to stitch that up later and all my sections are all fel felted on the inside as well there we go so the process you want to do next is get a bowl One bowl of warm water. It doesn't have to be hot. Unless you think it needs to shrink a little bit more. And some vinegar. It doesn't matter whether you've got cider vinegar, white vinegar or malt vinegar. As long as vinegar, it will help. Because of the soap in the wool, it will help bring back the pH balance to your mittens, to the woolen item. So literally just put it in there for a bit. I left mine in there yesterday for about, I think it was about half an hour. I just give a bit of a squeeze. You can see all the soap suds coming out of there and the last remnants of any dye, but it's mostly soap. Leave them in there for a bit and let them just soak for about half an hour. I'll just go off and leave them and rinse them out later on. And then I'll literally just rinse them underneath the cold, the warm tap later on with some hand Hand gel, um, some, some hand wash is really, you can use hand wash, you can use a bit of shampoo or something like that if you want to give it a bit of a nicer smell. But these are the perfect gift to do, because if you've seen how long it's taken me to do that, it's probably take me an hour to do a pair of mittens at the max. Drying, I had these in front of the fire last night and they were dry by the time I come down this morning. I didn't stuff them with any paper or anything like that to give them a shape, I just wanted them to, to dry flat like that um but yeah so that i mean it's perfect gift to meet in the afternoon so one of your neighbors you just pop around with a little treat for you for your christmas and you're like oh i didn't get them anything you can have one of these a pair of these made up in an afternoon not even an afternoon in an hour dried on the radiator wrapped up and popped through the letterbox tomorrow morning sort it that's all you need to do i'm sure there's an oap neighbor that never forgets you with a box of chocolates every year and I'm sure a pair of mittens will come in really, really handy for them. And the fact that they're handmade as well, 
they'll love him even more. So there we go. Joe's handmade mittens. So alternatively you can make slippers out of those and I might do some slippers next year. Um, and beret, I've been dying to try and make a wet felted beret for a while. So I'll have to put that one into the plan of works and see where I can come up with. Um, because I don't wear woolly hats. They irritate my forehead so much that my mum got fed up with me when I was a kid. And um, I think she ended up getting me a beret. I think it only lasted one winter and never wore it again. They just irritate my forehead so much. I don't like having a sweaty head. Um, so yeah, I think that's what I'll try next year. And I'm gonna do another couple of wet felted vessels throughout next year's videos. I wanna do some three dimensional ones with flowers where you, they're actually felted onto the bowl in the process of the um, adding embellishments. Um, and then cut out the little bits, there's little tricks to it. But yeah, I think that'll be interesting to do that next year. If you have any ideas that you'd like me to do for content for next new year, drop me a message on my social media. Everyone knows where to find me on Woolly Cottage. Facebook mate, or drop me a comment below if there's any type of wet felty projects you'd like me to investigate or do for you next year, then all comments and suggestions are welcome. I'd really like to say thank you ever so much for all the support and the thoughtful emails that I've had from clients from my Christmas Advents this year. It's very much, as I said earlier on, it's very much appreciated to know that I'm doing something right. You, you always doubt yourself when you're on a small business, um, especially when you're having quiet periods. You're like, am I not doing anything good enough? Do I need to change my, my way of doing things? But when you get emails from customers saying, I absolutely love my, my batty clubs or the order that I've done, that you did for me a couple of months ago, this is the finished article and it, it's really, really nice to get that feedback back. Though you could go into my Google business and go and leave a review. Anyway, take care of yourselves. I hope you all have a really, really lovely day. Me and Phil are gonna be arguing over playing Monopoly and um, Scrabble, which is our usual go-to on a Christmas day. And then we talk a bit normal for Christmas dinner and then it's back to arguing over who's just cheated. So that's the crux of our day. So I shall see you um, next Saturday, which is the new year. So you'll all be dying on the sofa next Saturday when Joe pops on at lunchtime. So take care of yourselves. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Bye bye.